So, uh, hi everyone in the Code Maven channel. Uh, my name is Gabor Sabo, and I'm here with Olga Tapinova. Hi, Olga. Hi. You might have already seen one of the videos when she was explaining her her project that she did for the uh, programming bootcamp um, in the Weizmann Institute, and then we discussed that uh, maybe the, she 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 can put it uh, on uh, on GitHub. Uh, but she doesn't know Git because I didn't teach that, unfortunately, during the course. So this time we're going to go through um, it, the basics of, of Git, just to the point that she can, that you can, okay, now I'm talking to you, <laughs> that <laughs> you, you can um, push your, your code to, to GitHub, okay? So the best would be that you, you, sh you share your screen, um, you need, well, we will we'll need a browser for definitely. I don't know if you're sh sharing the whole. Oh, nice car. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, the first thing is so just just a quick ex explanation. There is Git, uh, and the, the, which runs on your computer, and it can manage the history of your code on your computer. And there is uh, there are these uh, cloud-based hosting services. Uh, where you can push out all the history of your code and, and your code. And one of them, the most popular one, is GitHub. Okay, But they are, these are two different things. So there are others like GitLab and, and Bitbucket and, and other smaller ones uh, that could be used. GitHub is just being the most popular out of all these. And uh, they all are Git backends, but uh, Git itself can work standalone, nothing to do with them. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is install a Git, uh, let's call it a Git client. Uh, I just usually call it Git, but uh, a Git tool. Uh, there are various tools for Windows. Uh, there are various uh, graphical user interfaces. Um, most uh, big IDEs like PyCharm and uh, others have integration with Git, but I always prefer to use the command line because, and I always prefer to teach the command line because each tool has its own strange behavior or different behavior but once you know how to use the command line and the command line uh, the commands on the command line uh, of git then um, you will be able to figure out all the rest as well okay so first thing you need to install the so the first thing you need to install there is the git uh, command line so open your browser whatever browser you use and there is a search for git scm S SCM. SCM. Yeah. It's source course management. Uh, and then uh, for Windows, I guess you need to click on that one. And then from here, the, pick the, it's already saving something? Yeah, OK. Yeah. Okay, it's a 64, 64, bit, 64 bit version. OK, so that's one thing that you need to install. Um, if you, is it already downloaded? Yeah, it's it will take a minute. Okay, so. so while it's downloading, we can go to GitHub. That GitHub. means the browser. Okay. So the other thing that you'll you'll have to do is uh, uh, create a user, uh, unless you already have a user here. Yeah, I, I think I registered. Yeah. Okay, so you registered. You're logged in already. Okay, so. Yeah. We there here too. There are plenty of ways to create a repository, uh, but click on this plus uh, just to the top right. Yeah, new repository. Uh, here you create give a name of this to this repository. Something without spaces. Uh, you can use lowercase, uppercase, Latin letters, numbers, dash. I guess uh, I would say with Y, not with you, but. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but, uh, I, I'm not sure that I should, should use Python Bootcamp uh, uh, because, well, are you trying? Wait a second. Are you trying to push <laughs> the sort the uh, the solutions of all the exercises or only your project? Um, I'm not sure. I haven't thought about it. Let's say only my project. So okay. So then, then it would be best just whatever uh, accounting software, budgeting, budgeting. Okay, whatever you can change it later. Okay, so it's just 
Um, okay, budgeting, whatever. Okay, and then you select that it's a public repository. That's okay. That's the default. You don't need any of the others because so public is okay. And you go to scroll down and and create a repository. So you can choose all kind of other things. I think I never do this. So okay, just create the repository. Okay. So it will create a repository in Git, GitHub, okay? And we are going to, once the command line tool is installed, then we are going to create a repository locally on your computer, and then we connect the two, okay? So for mm -hmm. now, you can leave this, just to leave the window open because you will need, will need it. And then you can install the, the client. And uh, before you click on all of them, well, let me just, okay, next. That, that, that's okay. There's one, yeah. one place where you have, when you should change something. That's still okay. Everything, I think. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, here, set, instead of Vim at the top, select and probably Notepad is a good default, good editor. So it, they basically, okay. uh, at certain commands, uh, it needs you to type in some text and it opens a, an editor by default. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, Vim is a really nice editor, but uh, if people if you don't know how to use it, then uh, it's gonna be really hard. And actually, one of the most popular questions on Stack Overflow is how to quit Vim because people don't even know how to close it. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, the point is that uh, if you con configure here, then the default is gonna be for you Notepad plus plus, which is better. Okay, okay. so next, uh, next. Yeah, I think next, next. Uh, I, I don't, yeah, okay, go, you can go on the next. So I think they added a couple of more questions here since the last time I tried it, but you can just uh, say next. Uh, but I think the, the only thing really that I need uh, to be changed is this one because that uh, drives people crazy, uh, the, the editor. Okay, so... We have the, we are going to have, uh, okay. And then do you have your project in a, in a, yeah. And that's it, finish. Okay. Should I launch Git Bash? Or? No, no, we are going to do it uh, ourselves. Yeah. So, okay. So now uh, you can run, uh, click on the, on the window key and start type in bash. Uh, B -A -E, yeah. So Git Bash, that's what we want to run all the time. Um, you probably used the CMD window or whatever Anaconda supported, uh, su uh, supplied, mm -hmm. which is a CMD window. And there you can talk, you can write in the language of, of Windows or DOS, okay? That's how you, you can give the commands. This is a different window, which is called a bash window. Uh, it's short for born again shell, doesn't really matter the name, but, uh, this is the most popular way to talk to Linux machines, Linux and Unix machines. So for example, in, in, the, in the Weizmann Institute, if you're using the, the, um, uh, cluster. the cluster, yeah, then you're using mm -hmm. Linux and you're using probably bash there. So now you have a bash window on your, own, on your, on your Windows machine. And it's way, mm -hmm. way more powerful than the, than the one that, um, uh, so you can type in, for example, PWD, and then it will show you where you, where are you in uh, in in Windows. So instead of C colon backslash okay. and the pass, you would use these slash C slash user slash Olga T. Okay. Now you we need to go change directory and it's CD to the directory to the folder where you have your uh, source code project? The, pro the project. I have to check it. Yeah. Okay. So it's, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's one thing that, but uh, can you say, uh, okay, we, we, you don't need all of them added here. So we'll do that. Now, one more thing that, at least one more thing that we need to do is configure, um, 
uh, Git. Uh, so I'll send you a link so we won't need to search for it uh, and I won't need to uh, type it in. Let Will me... you send it here in Zoom? In, in the Zoom, yeah, I'll, I'll just, I need to find the, wait a second, chat, I'll send you the link and then you can open in the browser. This is just a, one of my slides. Uh, so you need these two commands, uh, but before you do it, uh, the, the way Git works is that uh, you make changes your, to your code and then you, uh, the, the, and you commit your changes into this, the history of Git. And in each, on each commit, uh, they will, um, it will uh, uh, write who is the person who committed these files and it will include the whatever is written in the user.name in this like you can you see the first two rows and and also the email and i always tell people that this is public information this user username and this email is going to be uh, publicly available okay so github these days try tries a little bit to protect it but in the end uh, anyone who downloads your repository will be able to access this email. And this sort of like, I try to let people know that they, be, they should be aware that uh, this email is going to be public. So maybe they don't give, uh, they have a special email just for this, okay? Um, I, I personally have my regular email here because my email is all over the world anyway, uh, on various websites. So many spammers yeah. already include it. So these are the two commands that you have to give, obviously with your, your name, not with FUBAR and with your, your email address, okay? So you can copy paste can it. Just copy? Yeah, you can, yeah. but uh, copy just one, copy just one of them yeah, and then edit it because otherwise, uh, yeah. Yeah, and then here you can, I think right click and then paste. Yeah, same problem as... Yeah. Shift in, and then you can write there your name, and and that's that's. Uh, so I have to change the entire right. No, 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 no. The the user dot name is good. Just instead of fubar, type in the no, no, no. That's oh, that was good. Okay. User dot name, that's the name of the field, and then instead of fubar, type in your name. And and probably capital O. I don't know. I want you just no, just just this fine. okay. Okay, and now also the email. And I guess actually you don't even need to give a real e email address. You can put any field. It's just, uh, you can put there anything basically, I guess. So they don't check it, right? No one, no one really checks it. Okay. It's just like an account, accounting, right? So you, <laughs> it's just like an accounting. So when, when, Later on, if more multiple people contribute to this repository, then you will be able to see who made ch which changes. And mm -hmm. it's very useful because then you will be able to ask that person, why did you make this change? And, and maybe they remember or whatever. So uh, that's the main purpose. Okay, so you configured it. There are tons of other things to config that you could configure uh, for in Git, but these are the two, one, two -ish items that you have to. Okay. Now we are in the, and, and just so you know, this is not per project. This configuration is per your user. So we all, we did it after we changed the directory into this project, but we could have done it uh, any, anywhere, anytime. Okay. It doesn't matter. Now, okay. the next thing is that we are creating the local repository with Git. If you type in Git in it, Git space in it, and I think that's it. Maybe you have to get the dot. I'm not sure. Yeah. So now it's set up a Git repository locally. Basically, what it it created a directory called called dot Git. So if you type in ls now again, or yeah. ls yeah, ll is better. Uh, actually, type in ll and space minus a, because uh, by default uh, directories starting with a Close. dot are hidden. So this created. Normally, you would not need to touch anything inside this .git directory. That's where 
all your history is going to live, okay? And your files are, 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 are here. Now we need to add uh, the program to this. If you type in git status, git space status, it, you will see uh, that uh, like all of the files, it says untracked files and every file you have is listed under. Because at this point, Git has a repository here locally, but officially doesn't know about any of the files. It's not tracking any of the files. And you want to track the pi files, the dot pi files, I guess, because those, these are, this is the program. And I want, and probably you want to make sure that the CSV files are not uh, tracked, are not included, and are definitely don't go to GitHub. So mm -hmm. the first thing is that we add the files that we would like to add. So you can say git add, git space add, and then uh, I think it's star.py would match all the pi files. Okay, I don't know if you hear it, or washing, mach washing machine is working really hard yeah. next to me. <laughs> I, no, I, hope I, I cannot. Okay, that's good, so it's only me. Uh, okay, so if you run git status again, you will see that some of the files are in the to be committed, okay? So mm -hmm. they are in, in what we call a staging area. So we prepare the files that we would like to commit. And the rest are still there, still untracked. So now we can commit the files. So you type in git commit. And here comes the thing. It, okay, so you already pressed enter. Uh, so what, yeah. just let, let it explain. So it needs a commit message. It needs an explanation. What what did you change? And this is really good because later on you can look at the history uh, and you see these commit messages. So it's relatively easy for you. So it's, if you give good explanations on each one of them, then um, it's going to be relatively easy to find where did you make some change. You can give this commit message on the command line. Okay. Or if you don't, next time we are going to do it, do it on, the, on the command line. If you don't give it on the command line, then it opens the default editor. And you remember that's what we changed. So, so instead of Vim, it opened the Notepad++. All the lines that are here in the, uh, after the hash mark are, are excluded from the commit message, okay? So you don't have to worry about them. These won't be included in the commit message. What will be included is whatever you type above it. So now you can type uh, initial commit or, uh, I mean, here, here there's not much to explain what changed because this is the first version that you uh, write. So people do something like this, initial or initial, initial check-in or something. Initial version, that doesn't really matter, okay. In the version. Okay, and then when you, now you save the file. Okay, it's a temporary file and then you close the window and then it continues and it created the commit, okay? It's checked in the file, which basically put it somewhere in the .git directory, okay? But we don't really care about that. It's, for us, it doesn't matter. If you type in git status again, now you don't see these files anymore because they are committed. They are still there. So if you type in ls or ll, You'll see that the files are still there. Everything they, uh, yeah. Git doesn't touch the files. It just copied them and stored them in the in the repository, and it, in the status doesn't report them. Now the other thing that we would like to make sure is that none of these files actually maybe the PDF you would like to uh, add as well. I don't know. Would you want to add add or would you want yeah. to exclude? Okay. Yeah, I think I would add it. Yeah. Okay, so let's do first exclude all the other files. So you can create a file called .gitignore, okay? For here in this place. So it's called git, git no, it's, no, no, no. The, it's one, one word without space, okay? Gitignore, uh, but you, in order to create it, uh, before that, write, uh, I think you can write touch, the word touch. Ah, ah so I want to create it, yeah? You, you would like to create a file yeah. like this, yeah? So we create an we can you can have it an empty file that's okay. And now you have to edit the file and include in this file a, a some way so you can edit it with Notepad++ let's say. 
okay? You open Notepad++, you open your regular uh, window file explorer, yeah? And then uh, here you go to the git ignore file. It's, it's almost at the top third line, oh, yeah? yeah? And then open it with Notepad++ is a good, okay? So now if you type in star.csv, for example, okay? star.csv and save the file. Don't close it now, just save it. You go back to the command line, run git status again. You can just uh, up, up arrow. You don't have to type it yeah, again. Yeah, sure. You can just uh, use the up arrow, yeah. Okay, so now it notices that there is a new file called git ignore that it doesn't track, but it disregards all the others. So the other file you would like to ignore is the PyCharm, the other directory. So add that too to the file. Okay, so it is underscore done underscore PyCharm add to the file. Next it's line. PyCache. It's PyCache. Okay, sorry, uh, I don't really see it. It's too red for that. Yeah, it's PyCache. And two and yeah, okay. Say so you save it, and then if you go back there again, it will say okay. Okay, yeah. so now you can do git add and give the name of the file uh, that you would like to add. I personally like to have that each commit, uh, in each commit, do something uh, separate. So uh, do something uh, uh, on its own. So uh, these two files, we can commit them together because they are sort of uh, additional files, but many, many times I would commit them one by one so each commit has its own separate message. Um, they are uh, it's it's especially interesting when you make start making changes, and you would like to make sure that uh, the different changes are included in different commits. So you don't put uh, changes. Mm -hmm. that I, I changed. I added some feature and also fixed some typo. Uh, you would probably want to have them separate commits because. Later on, when you look at the code and you say these changes, and then you also see the change in the typo, and then a year from now, you will start wondering, why did I change that? What is the connection between the two? Because people forget what, what okay? And, um, and if you commit them separately, then you can say, okay, this is just fixing a typo. This is adding this feature. And it's, it's, it's cleaner. Uh, so here you can do git add and name of the file, uh, one of them. So you actually, okay, so you would like to add the PDF file. That's okay. So git add, okay. Run git start, git add, enter. And also git status. Okay, and now you add git commit, but don't press enter instead of that. Uh, after git commit, type in minus M. And then in, in quotes, in double quotes, let's say, or single quotes, doesn't matter, you can put some, the text message that you want to give it. And it, then it won't open the editor, it will just use this as the commit message. Okay. And then press enter. Okay, whatever. And then it you committed it. And if you run git status, then you will see that it's only the git ignore that's not, commit, not uh, tracked. And uh, git ignore is a file that we usually add to the repository because even if someone else uh, um, or you on another computer would like to edit, you still want to exclude all those files. So ignore all those files. So you add this file as well. You first need to git add. Okay, all, every time you make some you have a file that's not dragged, or if you change a file, you will have to first git add and that file and then git commit. Yeah. Okay. Now, one thing you can type in now git space log. 
And there were various ways to see this, but what you see here is three comets um, in reverse order. So the last one is the, well, the, the lowest one is the, is the it was, was, was the first one. The, the, the long strain string is called the SHA. It's S-H-A-1. <clears throat> it's just a, an ID for this uh, comet. This, uh, uh, we also call it check-in. Check -in. You see who is the author, you see when was when did it happen, and you see the the text that you you typed in. Okay, so this is the way basically to later on to see the history. Okay, so now you have uh, you we already created a repository. Um, yeah. So if if I want to make like lots of changes, then I'll have like lots of comments here, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. And it's okay. Uh, we, uh, there, are, there are projects with hundreds of thousands of changes and commits, and and that's yeah. like like it's okay. And it, it's cheap in both in in disk space. So it you can now go back to any of the the, the versions. So let's actually okay. Let's first connect it to pu push it to GitHub, and then we make a, a, a change here. So go back to the window with GitHub now, because now we already have the repository here locally, uh, and now we would like. To push it out. So GitHub, yeah. So if you scroll down, there are various ways to, to do here. I do the, the the one that's not that, no, 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 that, that, not that, the one above it. There are three command command lines. So the first here, just where you see, or push existing repository, that's one. So the first command you give is the git remote add origin. Copy just one by one, okay? Okay. Copy the first one. Okay. This basically configures the local repository. A name, the word origin is going to be mapped to the repository uh, remotely. Okay, the, on GitHub. So that's when the, that's the first step. Next step is um, well, this is okay. Whatever you do, it uh, it changes the. There are branches. We don't deal with branches, and they decided at one point that the word master is not good, so we are using main. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then the last one is now you're pushing out. Uh, this is now when you're pushing out to GitHub your code. Okay. And it all you also configured. Oh, oh, okay. Oops. So. Okay, so we'll have to change something. Don't don't do this now. Don't do this now. Wait a second. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I forgot one step that we could do, uh, but you can actually do this. That's that's also good. So that's that's fine. Okay. So sign in is your browser. Well, that's okay. It will ask you to authorize the the command line, and you can authorize it. And then it will remember your credentials. Okay. You can close this tab. Okay, and it's finished. And it won't probably it won't ask you passwords anymore. Okay, okay so you, you go, can go back to the browser, uh, reload this page. This page you can reload just. Okay, now this, that disappeared and now you can see the, your code. And if you mm -hmm. click, for example, to the, on the top, on the right side, under the big green button, there is three commits. So you can see the same three, the same history here. Yeah. And everyone can see it now because it's a public repository. Okay, and we're going to link to it from the video page so people will be able to use your project. Okay, we'll be able to find it. We'll also uh, connect. So now let's make. So basically, this is like this is the basic. You push it out. Now let's make a change, a little change in your code, and then push out the change. How to? Okay. Sorry. So uh, should I make make a change in my files? Locally, yeah. You locally change, make a change. You can I don't know add the space somewhere. Doesn't really matter. One of the Python files, you can, uh, okay, maybe you remove the email address. Can I just add a comment? Yeah, whatever you like. Yes. Doesn't matter. Save okay, it. I no. add it. 
So go to the, okay, you saved it. Okay, you yeah. go to the command line, git status. Okay, this one uh, shows that there is a file that's, that we are tracking, I mean, git is tracking, and it has been modified since the last time you committed it. So it's different. Mm -hmm. Now you still, in order to commit this, you still need to say git add and the name of the file. This one you will, and this is important because let's say you have several changes in several files, but you don't want to commit all of them at once. So you can first prepare it, the ones that you want to add. So git add, okay. You run git status again. Git status is only there so we can see what's mm -hmm. happened. You don't really need it, okay? I personally run it all the time, so I can make sure uh, I don't make uh, too big a mistake, okay? Mm -hmm. That's basically. And now you need to commit it. So git commit, and then again, you can say minus M and some commit, commit message if you don't want the editor. If you'd like to have some longer um, uh, message, then it's okay. Then you you leave out the minus M and then it opens an editor. Okay. So now running git log here. So you can see now that I have four commits now and you see the origin main on the third one, the red origin main. So basically it says that the remote server, the one that's in GitHub that we call origin here, okay? So at this point, it just says it's called origin. Uh, it's only, it only has the first three commits. Uh, the fourth commit, I only have it locally. I mean, you have it locally, okay? But that's what Git says, okay? So even if you go to GitHub now and reload the page, you still won't, will see only the three commits, okay? So only made, you made only local changes. It's uh, not- How to, oh, I see, yeah. Okay, you only see the three commits. Okay, mm -hmm. now if you go back to the command line, you can type in git push. You don't need all the other parameters because now it already mapped uh, itself. Git push, enter. Now it's pushing out the new change. So if you go yeah. run git log again here, okay, you can track it. Okay, so there you can see. Okay, if you go back to the command line, and run git log, then you see that the red thing went up to the to the topmost commit. So it says yeah. uh, now the remote is also, uh, or also has this commit, okay? And of course, there are a lot more things here to learn, but basically that's like, like, that's like the basics of uh, being able to add some changes, and uh, commit them and, and push them out. And then there are all kinds of things that we, I won't go into because it's way too much, uh, would be way too much, but you can easily go back to an earlier version of your code uh, and, let, and, and check out what's going on there. You can all uh, revert some changes that you make some change and then you later think, oh, that, that was a bad, and you already committed it. So you said, oh, it's a bad change, let's, Revert yeah, that to, change. How to see my previous version? Okay, so that one I can show you now easily. So type in git checkout, git checkout, and then after it, space, no, 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 no that's, that's no. not, just git checkout, and you need now copy. Uh, hmm. Well, there are two, a couple of ways to do this. One of them is that you copy the SHA. Okay, the specific SHA. Uh, the other one would be to type in head and how many, uh, and the number of how many uh, commits you would like to go backwards. But let's try this the, with the SHA because, so you go to uh, try to copy the one that starts with 45. Okay, you see, so this SHA's, okay, yeah. You copy that one, yeah, the space doesn't matter. Actually, I think the, I cannot, okay, I forgot. 
I cannot use Control C for copy. No, no, no. You, yeah. So to keep check out, and then you can right click, and then yeah, right click, and then you, you yeah, copy. There are other yeah. Okay. So first of all, there is this big warning that you are um, head detached head and what, whatever. Okay. The point here that you shouldn't start committing new versions here. Okay. But if you go now, you go back to your editor. Um, the notepad, yeah, and it says it the file changed on the disk. So you say yes, okay, da. Yeah, see and the, this is previous version. It's a previous version. So now go back to the command line. Type in git checkout main. Okay, go back to the editor. Again, it changed the file. Okay, and now you back yeah, to the, this, this editor edition. Okay, um, at this point, I, I would what I would recommend that if you'd like, if you need to go back to an older version, go back, look around. Okay, uh, whatever you need from there, copy to some totally different place, then check out again main and then move put these things back okay because uh, um, otherwise i mean you need to know, learn a lot more about git in order to be able to use all these uh, more the historical features okay um but um i think the fact that you can already so for me one of the big okay one more thing that, that i would really would like to, to show uh, one big thing for me is uh, that it happens quite often to me, uh, maybe too often that I shouldn't admit it, that I make I I start making some changes to my code, and uh, at the first I make good changes, but then I make some bad change to my code, and I would like to get rid of this last couple of changes, okay. And um, sometimes your editor can you can do undo with your editors, but sometimes it's you made so many change these bad changes that you don't really know exactly how to do it. So if you do frequent commits to your version control, then it's really easy to just say, okay, whatever I made since the last commit, just forget about it. Okay, so let's do this now. We are. Okay. On at main, right? Yes. We oh, say so. Go to the editor. Type in something here. Just some garbage. Okay. Just press the key, the keyboard as many times as you can. Okay. <laughs> Good. Okay. Save it. Go back yep. to the command line. Okay. So you made some changes now. Git status. And yeah. you try it and you say, no, I don't want this change. Okay. So since your last commit, you made some change. Ah, one thing you can type in git diff. Okay. Type in git diff. Git space diff. Right. It is 2f, two, 2f. Two two Enter. It shows you what changed. Okay. That can help also. Mm -hmm. But let's say you say, okay, no, I don't care about it. So, you type in git reset, I think. Let's see, because they, they added this feature and the name of the file. Okay. Okay, no, that's not what, what need uh, git status again. Sorry, <laughs> I, I I, I use something, I use git checkout all the time here. So let's go back to this. Okay, but I think there is another command. So git checkout and name of the file. Maybe it's revert. I don't remember. I think this is a newer command and I never remembered. Yeah. Okay, if you run git status, It doesn't have the change. If you go back to your editor, it 
was changed. It was changed? Yeah. And you are back to the previous. So this is one of the most powerful things that you, you already get from the editor. You make, you, you uh, for, sorry, from Git, that if you have a project and you add files to this project, and if you frequently commit after you made some good changes, then if you make, if you make some bad changes, you can easily get rid of this. Okay, forget, just forget all this and go back to the last good place. Okay. Um, so, uh, so I don't have to use this reset, right? I no, no, that's that was a wrong command. No, that was that does something else. So just check out and yeah, name of them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And 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 again, there are tons of more things to do with Git. Um, and uh, but I think this is this is already already a good point to start and. Okay, any more questions before we, we finish this? Uh, so if I want to, for example, manage my files that I don't want to make them open, so I can make like closed. Yeah, closed yeah, you can, folder. these days you can already create, if you go back to GitHub um, and then you click on the plus button, it doesn't matter where, here Which you can one? top right, top right on the right side, right. There's yeah, a plus button, yeah. <laughs> new, new repository. And then if you private. convert it to private, then just you can see. And then you can give access okay. to other people, but it's only you can see it. And of course, GitHub. So <laughs> Yeah, sure. So that that's the level of privacy, of course. Okay. And if you happen to uh, have a video and then you share it, then other people can also see it. <laughs> Uh, yeah. One has to be careful with that. But yeah, I have a number of private repositories and I have um, um, well, all kinds of projects there that I don't want the people, uh, in general, people to see. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good. So I hope that uh, that helped. And uh, let me. Oh, you're sharing the screen. Okay, good. Stop yeah. it. That's good. So. Uh, thank you everyone for watching this and please like the video and uh, follow the channel and uh, check out uh, the project of Olga. We have the other video, uh, she explaining it and then start sending her pull requests. Um, okay, just, to, just this a pull request is basically someone making some changes uh, to your code. They can't really cha make changes on your repository on GitHub because they don't have the rights. So they create what we call a fork, uh, which is just a copy oh, of yeah. the project. Uh, they make the change there, and then they can send you a, what they call a pull request, what GitHub calls a pull request, basically a request to you to integrate their changes into your project. And then you can decide whether, oh, you love it and you accept it, or you tell them that, yes, but I like to use uh, my variable names differently and then please fix it and then I can, I can accept it. Or you can say, no, this is not the direction at all I, uh, I wanted to go and reject it totally. But uh, that's basically how the, in the, at the end open source works and, and then more mm -hmm. people can contribute to your project. Okay, so everyone who's watching this, please check, check out her project, check out the video. And uh, if you like it, then uh, start using it and start contributing to it. So thank you and bye-bye. Bye-bye.